Today, Clarence Media is in beautiful Hawaii, or should I say, <laughs> sunny Yamba. Home, the most livable town in, in, uh, in Australia and home to one of our very own councillors, Karen Toms. Thanks for joining us, Karen. You're very welcome, Bill. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. No worries. And uh, yeah, as of uh, the people running for council, there are four previous councillors running again and you're the longest serving of those. Uh, certainly um, got plenty of experience uh, should people vote for you on election day. I have, yes. I was first elected in 2008, so I'm probably the veteran that's staying on, although there are a few newbies who, will, of course, have a lot more uh, years behind their belts. But, yeah, I've, um, this, is, this will be my fourth term if I'm successful in getting re-elected. OK, and so for people that might not be that familiar with who you are, just tell us a little bit, bit about yourself. Sure. Okay, well I've lived in the Clarence Valley. We moved, my husband and I and my children, we moved from Brisbane in 2001 and we had a bit of a lifestyle change and ended up managing the most beautiful place in the world almost is Woody Head Camping Ground in Bundjalung National Park. So uh, we also were tourists for years before we moved there to manage the park. So we turned our dream holiday destination into our working place and it was an honour and a privilege to look after that um, wonderful camping ground. Yeah, so we've been here for 20 years. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, so yeah, there are going to be at least five new faces on council, a couple of those potentially returning from, from other generations, but um, what do you think that, uh, would be like having a fresh, uh, some fresh faces on council yeah, would mean? Yeah, look, I think, it's, I think that'll be great because the five councillors who are um, retiring have wanted to retire for some time um, and of course with the election being postponed a couple of times that's made it a bit difficult for them so I think they'll be pleased when their job is done and of course if you're not really wanting to be there I, I think you know you don't get the best out of people when they're not happy in their job so I think it's going to be great that we'll get um, potentially nine new councillors. I'm not taking it for granted that I will get re-elected. I hope I do. Um, but of course, you know, you can't take that for granted. It's mm -hmm. a democracy and um, the 16 candidates. So that's wonderful. And I'm really happy that there's four women mm -hmm. this time that's great. included. Yeah. So hopefully we might see more than what there was two on the previous council. Yeah, sadly we um, lost two at the last election, two. But um, it's always, it's really important that we have a diverse, a diversity of, of candidates because um, they're supposed to be representing our community and what our community looks like and our community is about 50-50 in gender, women and men. So yeah, I think it's really important to have more women on the council because mm -hmm. that's the reflection of what our community is. So yeah. I'm really hopeful that the four women who are standing, including myself and Councillor Novak, um, get on this new council. Yeah, okay. And uh, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that will be the, the new council will face? Well, I think financial sustainability is always one of the big ones. Um, and we have millions of dollars being thrown at us at the moment for uh, Capital Works projects, which is all very wonderful. You know, we've got 31 new bridges that that are happening and and uh, lots of other projects which is fabulous but of course it does it does make um, other it, it creates other issues for us as a council um, whole of life costs and perhaps even extra staff mm -hmm. to run the you know things the community tree lands drive center when the library is in you know it's great but it also has a negative and we need to be careful how we manage that those grant funds mm -hmm. and um, but you know no one ever wants to knock them back but you, we do have to be careful and the financial side of council is something that I'm um, very interested in mm -hmm. because I'm a businesswoman okay. and I have to you know we have to be we have to live within our own means and uh, and I want our council to be financially sustainable and spend less than our income that's what we need to do mm -hmm. okay. okay and um, so speaking of Capital Works and things like that, what about uh, here as a Yamba local, the, um, the Yamba Bypass is a big yeah. issue here. What, what are your thoughts on, on, on that? Yeah, look, the Yamba Bypass has been on the agenda for, oh, I'm not sure, a couple, probably more than two decades, probably longer than when I arrived here. Um, I think it's important 
but it's not the be all and end all because it only starts once you get over the Oyster Cove Bridge. So we're still going to only have the one lane from the highway all the way through Palmer's Island into Yamba and over the Oyster Cove Bridge. So I think the reality is we probably need to be a little bit more ambitious and look at other ways of coming in off the highway, having another route in off the highway, which isn't going to be easy because there's a lot of floodplain. We, you know, Yamba's a floodplain. But um, there's been arguments from staff for some time that it's not needed yet. But we need to make sure that we don't wait until it is needed because the planning that's involved in things like that takes years. And we still haven't acquired all the land that we need to do the section from the Oyster Cove Bridge through to Angari Road. Right. So we're still a little way off, but yes, it is important. And I thank the, the councillors way before us to at least get us to this stage. Yeah, yeah. okay. And uh, just from your most pre recent term, what would you list as some of your major achievements? Oh, okay, well, um, the roundabouts would be one in Yamba. Um, they started off as, uh, they were, it was resolved, council had a resolution that they were going to be three sets of traffic lights and the community, the Yamba community did not want three sets of traffic lights. So I put forward a rescission motion and uh, we had an extraordinary meeting in September 2018. The chamber was full, people with placards. Um, and we managed to reverse that decision and the reality on the, on, the, on the roads now is we have three wonderful roundabouts. So I'm really happy that we were able to reverse that decision because the councillors who supported it um, weren't from Yamba, but the Yamba community were determined they did not want traffic mm -hmm. lights and I'm really happy that we were successful with that one. Mm -hmm. And also the sealing of James Creek Road and McIntyre's Lane, um, they were two gravel roads that were community wanted sealed and especially McIntyre's Lane, I'd fought for at least 10 years with notices of motion and community um, community meet, meetings on the side of the road and I found an old clipping just recently and I saw people in there that are no longer with us anymore which was sad but um, but I felt relieved when we finally achieved that as well. But it's an indication of how long you fought for it. Yes, yeah. yes I'm a <laughs> bit of a dog with a boner. If it's something the community wants then I will do all I can yeah. to, um, to fight for it if mm -hmm. I can. Okay yeah. and so yeah just to wrap up uh, yeah, on election day, Saturday, December the 4th, why should uh, voters vote, no, wait, vote one for Karen Toms? Well, I hope they'll give me their number one vote. Um, what's important to me as a councillor is uh, transparency and accountability, and I think we've been lacking in that this last term, which upsets me a little, and I think we need to learn respect. Um, some of our community members um, are treated quite badly, and, uh, you know, we're, e we're even banning some community members through our unreasonable complainants policy. And uh, it actually um, upsets me greatly that, you know, they ring up to find out something and they haven't even put in a complaint, to be honest. I've just requested information that, that um, they're, they're actually eligible to get under the Gipper Act and, and we're not doing what we should do and they're treated very badly and, and that just upsets me and um, I, I continue to fight for the community. I think we need to respect the community where, and remember why we're there and leadership is, is about respect and serving, serving the community um, and I think you know we need to remember that and I think that's been lacking. Right. Leadership's been lacking and serving the community right. so okay. please vote Number one, Karen Toms. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for joining us, Karen. And uh, to find out, to watch more of our um, Meet the Candidate Q and A set interviews, uh, just head to clarencemedia.com.au. Thank you.